You're watching TVC Breakfast. Now, it has without doubt been a long road to this point in Nigeria. Today makes it exactly 20 years that the country has enjoyed uninterrupted democracy. Nigerians openly welcomed civilian rule uh, on May the 29th, 1999, believing that different sectors would, be, would be, perform better than they had under the military. Yeah, but many Nigerians who have uh, critiqued the democratic journey under six different uh, administrations say that past governments have not lived up to their expectations in terms of improving access and standards of education. Joining me now is the National President, Association of Tutorial Operators, Dotun Shodunke. Dotun, good morning. It's good to have you join me right uh, now. Good morning. When it comes to the intelligence level of Nigerians and the brilliance, I believe it has been proven not once, not twice, that Nigerians are out there anytime. In, in, in the United States, Nigerians have proven that uh, they are excellent people when it comes to uh, uh, learning. In the UK, they have proven it. In Ukraine, they've come up with the best, in fact, we had the best medical student in Ukraine yeah. at the time, a Nigerian. In India, it's the same thing. Across the world, it's the same thing. But back home, when we talk about the education sector, we seem to talk more about the vacuum, the things that are not in place yet. What is really going on? You are the one who interacts with these people on a daily basis. What are the biggest challenges that we have in that regard? Uh, well, um, I think um, there is a serious issue with education in Nigeria. And uh, we still maintain a general saying that you don't need a grenade or bomb to end the country. Just make sure they are not educated. Let something happen to the education system, just the way we are in Nigeria. So we are sitting on a time bomb. Nigeria is the only country where children cry because they want to go to school, where children commit suicide because they fail, quote of quote, a certain exam. You know, um, Nigeria is the only country where you hear such thing. Then there is no access to education, both uh, you know, when either freely or you know intentionally you cannot willingly attend school without passing through a lot of hurdle and you see these students those that are frustrated here doing so well out when there they have the opportunity out because there. they have the opportunity mm -hmm. now what is the problem with nigeria the problem with nigeria is our psyche the problem with nigeria education is leadership i still maintain my general saying that we have problem with education because we have terrors leading education we have those that are not capable, that are being put at the ends of affair. We have VCs that have turned to emperors. We have typical principals that will not do what they are supposed to do. We have government, both at the state, local level, and um, national level, that places politics ahead of professionalism. All right, Let, let's, let's, let's take a cue from uh, Rwanda, for instance. Yeah. So Rwanda. Private schools in Rwanda are shutting down. In fact, from yeah. the last uh, uh, statistics we had, they have just about uh, less than 10 private schools now, and yes. all of them are at the verge of uh, shutting down. Yes. Because yes. public schools are the most uh, standardized schools, are the mm. most equipped, and they have the best of everything. Exactly. Uh, and all exactly. If you, if, you t if you come back to Nigeria, it is the other way around. How well are also the... the private schools doing here because the, 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 the enabling environment has been created for them to thrive. You see, one, one thing about private schools is, I'm being careful to say this because yeah. I have a lot of my friends there, it's not all of them, but private school as you know, in Nigeria, they have turned education to packaging and branding hmm. rather than, you know, giving out knowledge, the substance, the substance hmm. you know, and that is, that's evident in what we saw in the last, you know, jump, the analysis. We saw the first, second, and the third highest in this last jam mm. coming from public school. And we are asking, what is happening to private schools? It's a matter of time. They will not stand the test of time. And the government of Nigeria is the one giving them the opportunity. How can government spend $500 billion to feed children and they allocated 400 and something billion to education as budget? It's misplaced priority. Who, who are you feeding? Recently, the first lady came out and he said that he does not understand all this feeding and all this uh, social security stuff they are doing. You know, so it's misplaced priority. Let them invest genuinely on education. And we have a serious problem in Nigeria, and that is brain drain. Mm. The problem of Nigeria 
is directly reflecting on the education. Brain drain, right? When you see somebody that is sound today, tomorrow is no more in the country. Even you, very soon, I know you will leave for Canada. No, I am here. <laughs> Dato, thank you very much for coming. You're welcome. It's all right. Well, Dato is maybe, maybe he's looking at the crystal he's ball. He's in the future, uh, Mike. Oh, very You're watching TVC Breakfast. He, he has, without doubt, been a long road to this point in Nigeria. Today, we're talking about 20 years of democracy. Indeed. Well, today makes it exactly 20 years that the country has enjoyed uninterrupted democracy. Nigerians openly welcomed civilian rule on May the 29th, 1999, believing that different sectors would perform better than they had under the military. But many Nigerians who have critiqued the democratic journey under six different administrations say past governments have not lived up uh, entirely to their expectations in terms of improving access and standard of education as well as other sectors. Well, joining me now is the National President Association of Tutorial Operators, Dr. Shodunke. Thank you for joining us on TVC yeah, Breakfast. Morning. Over the years, uh, the education sector, uh, well, sometimes it's, uh, at some point there was uh, something called free education for, for students. But uh, over the years, we begin to see that uh, Nigeria has the highest number of out-of-school children. When you want to uh, critique these under uh, the, the, the um, democracy, 20 years of democracy, what are your views with regards to these? Have we paid as much attention to education? Uh, well, um uh, I want to say that um, well, we have not really moved forward, but um, the situation, what I can say, you know, vividly is that the uh, democracy is too expensive itself. Mm. Then um, we had this issue of, um, let me put it like this, round peg in square hole. Really? In, yeah, in democracy. Even in this present government, you know, the sitting minister of education, I've said it in, you know, different uh, fora that the present minister of education knows next to nothing about education. That's one of the major problems we have, you know, problems that we have in education. You should put the right person there. Now, the problem with, another problem with uh, this democracy in respect to education is security. When you look at the percentage of the out-of-school children, you will see that we have more, you know, from the northeast, as a result of, you know, the problem they are facing there in security, and it will continue. What about corruption in the it, education in sector? the education sector? Mm. I still maintain that maybe probably after, well, after, you know, oil sector, the you know, petroleum sector, and so on. The, the next place where there's serious corruption that the government need to really look into is education, serious corruption. So how do we build leaders of tomorrow when the basis, which is education, is facing all of these challenges that you have pointed out? Not only those challenges that I've pointed out. What about finance? What about, you know, how much do we vote into education? Of course. I have problem with that, but not as much as how they manage the little mm. that is voted there. We have terrors at the ends of our fear of education in Nigeria. And terror will introduce policy that will become error. Mm. And those that will consume this erroneous policy will become horror. Mm. And that's a big challenge. That is the situation. But there has are. to be a solution. It can't all be uh, bleak. Uh, well, w one of the solutions is one to put the right person there those that really know the job. Even in Lagos here, yeah, under the outgoing, okay, the outgoing, um, um, what's it called? Governor. Administration. Yeah. The man at the ends of affairs of education knows nothing about it. He was in two spots, that's Bank Olimo. And that's the way we have it in every state. How do you expect results? Mm. When you have people that really know this job there, it, and it, when you toy with education, you are toiling with, with the future. All right, Dr. Shodunke, thank you for your time on TVC Breakfast. Thank you.